Welcome to Positively Muskegon. It's Andy O'Reilly and today I am down at the beautiful Hackley Park. We are down here in the center of Muskegon and I have got an incredible guest with me here today. She's going to play it down. I tr Trust me on this. But what Tara is up to is really important. This is Tara Marquard. And I got to know Tara through Facebook, which is how we all get to know each other anymore. I Today's listen to Andy. you on the radio. First you listen time. to me on the radio? Mm -hmm. Now you're showing your ears. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been on the radio. So. I grew up with you through high school. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Now you're making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for listening and thank you for, uh, I mean, you follow the pages that we do and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I do. But what's more important this time around is I follow your pages. <laughs> and let, let's, let's go back and talk a little bit about you first. Are you from Muskegon originally? Originally, I grew up about 20 minutes north of Muskegon, a little town called Fulton. Heard of it. Mm -hmm. Not yet, not far from here at all. But this was our hometown. We always came here shopping yeah. and everything else. Kind of like me with Sparta. You know, when I grew up in Sparta, Grand Rapids hadn't really peaked yet. There was really not a whole lot to do. So we and came here for just about everything. Yeah. Same thing with you with Fulton. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, home base. Home base. Yep, I got out of Michigan for a while, I traveled the United States, and then I came back to Michigan and started making a permanent home here. And you do. <laughs> Try husband, it. kid, kids, husband, whole thing? Ex-husband, kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Right? But yep. today, and then we spent a little time on Facebook together, and you've just gotten done with some, some pretty big health things. You, you beat cancer. Yes. <laughs> I had what they call HER2 breast cancer okay and apparently it's mostly brought on by hormones really and they wound up doing genetic testing to see if I was if it came from my family and it never did really so they were trying like really hard you to figure it. out where it came from and we just couldn't figure it out okay so I went through chemo I lost all my hair it was a really emotional time um, I got mad I got really mad because I didn't know why I deserved it, what I did to deserve it. Right. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure I had karma coming from somewhere. but I'm that way too. <laughs> I know. Anytime life gets tough, and, and I've never had to face cancer or anything like that, but mm -hmm. anytime there's a bump in the road, it's like, what am I doing wrong in this universe that's making my life a bitch right now? Oh, yeah. I hate it. Definitely. So, but you, so you feel the same way with the I cancer do. thing. Yeah. I do. And I got through radiation. I got my little certificate of they let me torture me forever. And I <laughs> passed all the tests. And now i am been cancer free for almost two years. Is it two years? Almost. That's amazing. It, it, it goes by so fast. Because mm -hmm. I remember talking to you, you know, through Messenger and whatever, through mm -hmm. your radiation. I'd see you. And, you know, a lot of people don't know you this. But saw I, me bald. I you would saw see me. people. I see people sometimes on Facebook. And I'll look for keywords when I think they're really distressed. Mm -hmm. And I'll pop up and say something. Uh, well, and, I'm having a rough day. And then I, I, and I look <laughs> out for you. You know, it's just important to make that human contact to talk mm -hmm. to people and, and make sure they're okay. And that's something that I think I found in you that you like to do too, mm -hmm. is, is put that hand out to help others. Well, yeah, I like hearing... I've heard so much distress here in Muskegon. Like yeah. It's hard to find a job. It's hard to find a house. It's hard to do this. It's hard to do that. So much construction. The roads are hell. You know, just complain. Everybody wants to complain. <laughs> right. So I started thinking, okay, I used to follow this thing in New York called Humans of New York. Okay. And that's what got me on the idea. I was like, I think Muskegon could really heal from something like that, just telling their stories. And there's so many old timers here that I would love to get stories out of, but they they just don't want to talk. <laughs> right. Well, it's a generational thing to a degree. I think older people, they are, are that, that stoic, <laughs> quiet type that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just not saying anything. So I tried to make it less personal so I didn't just walk up to strangers and embarrass them with a camera and say, hey, tell me your life story. I'm right. just going to publish you somewhere and you're not going to know about it. So I started doing it in a way that was a little less personal. I started messaging people on Facebook and I'd get emails and email people that way because people like to talk to people they can't see. Right. It makes them more comfortable. Yeah. So I would ask them to submit a photo and at least a paragraph long story or, or something Who they that they are and what they're about. Share. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would never post anything personal. I'd never link them back to their, I mean, if they popped up on their post and, you know, that's fine. But yeah. I never brought any attention to them. Is it, and you say it's kind of slow. 
It's very slow. It is slow, but you know, I mean, everybody thinks that when you start a blog or you start a video thing or anything like that, everything, everybody thinks it's going to explode, oh, right? I and it's know. tough, but building an audience is difficult. And a lot of people just think you're fishing for anything personal that you can use against them. Right, but it's you're not, not like, doing that. Oh no! You're oh, you're no, no. you're chronicling <laughs> the people that are living here today. Mm -hmm telling their story about who they are, how they got here, exactly. what's important to them, and all that kind of I stuff. I want to dig into history and get some of that history out here. Yeah, that's Definitely. a good thing. How many have you had submit, would you guess? Oh, I've had maybe 50 or 60 at this point. we got to get that number up. <laughs> and I have a couple that want to repeat. And like you, I've done you a couple I've times. had a couple of them on there. Mm -hmm. I think I told my asteroid story. Yep. Um, and a meteorite. I don't have an mm -hmm. asteroid. Asteroids are big. You're a meteorite. Yeah, I'm a meteorite guy. And I don't remember the other one. Um, I think it was just the meteorite. And you were telling me about... It was when you were running oh, for Oh, yeah. Mayor. Running for the state house. Yeah, yep. that worked out good, didn't it? You're already mayor of Muskegon, <laughs> so why do you need to be elected? I know, I'm no, I'm nobody different. <laughs> and you know, that was the last thing I was worried about when the election was the title. Who cares? <laughs> You've had that for a long time. I know, time. right? <laughs> So it's Humans of Muskegon, mm -hmm. and it's, is it a website? Is it a Facebook page? It's a Facebook page right now. I haven't branched out to much of a website. I think I put it on Pinterest or something. Not Pinterest, but another one of those Tumblr, I think it was. Okay. I think I started one on there, too. Now just kind of merging everything over. Yeah, yeah. And, and people can su submit their story. Mm -hmm. Tell about them, who they are, what they do, all, and all they that kind of stuff. All do is message me on the page, and I'll edit it and go through it and take out any curse words and make it more family -friendly. Oh, no curse words? Come on. <laughs> Give us a few curse words, would you? <laughs> oh, damn nabbit. I know it, right? <laughs> I think what you're doing is, is amazing. And I wish I had more time to submit more, but who wants to read more about me? Oh, I know. I think that the people out there that have a chance to contribute to your thing um, you know, there, there, there's an underlying thing that we're trying to do with this, and that is show Muskegon at a time when media is not that great here. Oh, I know. And I, I hope someday somebody looks back at all these things at one of our museums and goes, you know, this Andy guy, he was really trying to make a difference when our media was all piped in from some places. Well, yeah, I'd like to eventually, if I get enough of them, make like a tabletop. Read. And that's you the thing with you. I think you're doing the same thing, but just a little different spin on it. Mm -hmm. Who are the people that are making this community happen today? Exactly. And what makes them tick? And what 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 bothers them? And right. what? And what, they don't need to be afraid. No, not at all. I mean, nobody's gonna come through this computer and bite them. It's right? just a story. What can it. it hurt? Share your story. Exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> you're gonna find the links right here on Positively Muskegon. If you want to tell your story and your time in Muskegon or share a thought or whatever makes you tick, Tara is the person to get a hold of. <laughs> it is the Humans of Muskegon Project. You're gonna find the links right here on Positively Muskegon. It's nice to meet you in person finally. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes to come down today. No problem. <laughs> you find those links and you get your story over to Tara and help her page grow a little bit. Tell your story about being one of the humans of Muskegon.